So the reason for this video slash PowerPoint is to give you a general overview of the concept of the hero's journey. As such, it's not meant to be an in-depth, comprehensive look at the topic. We'll spend uh, much time through the next few weeks uh, going into much greater depth regarding the hero's journey. So this is just to give you a, a sense of what the whole hero's journey is about. So f for now, it's sufficient for you to have a general grasp of the concept. Uh, the reason that we're dealing with this concept is due to the fact that many of the works we will be looking at will contain many of the criteria of a hero's journey. Also, we as humans find ourselves extending refusing the call to adventure at various times in our lives, and so I hope that being aware of this concept will help to make these works we'll be looking at more relevant to you in your own life, uh, rather than just seeing these works as dusty old stories from centuries and millennium ago that have nothing to do with you. Uh, there are definitely lessons to be learned if only we're willing to listen, and it's one of the main reasons why these actually exist. Now, Joseph Campbell, who was an author and teacher, uh, believed that myths and initiation rites are tied to one another and that these myths and rites exist to help a person cross thresholds of difficult transformation, uh, such as you know, having to severe the child's dependent bond on the mother, which then allows the child to mature into a healthy adult. The stories we're looking at are very similar to these myths that he looked at. It is these myths and rites that Campbell believes carries the human spirit forward towards full maturity. And that's the reason that he says they exist. Now, Campbell draws heavily on the theories of the psychologists uh, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, but he draws much more from Jung, who studied archetypes. Freud, however, looks to childhood as being the most tumultuous and difficult time of a person's life, as one struggles to create one separate identity and find one place in the world as an individual. Jung, on the other hand, is a person's later years when she, he or she is dealing with losing power uh, and not being the powerful person they were when they were younger and having uh, to finally truly face death as death is becoming near. And, and this is the more difficult days of life for him. In either case, however, Campbell proposes that myths teach us that death can only be conquered by birth or actually rebirth, so not a literal death. One must go within on a spiritual journey, kill the ego, and come back a new person. So the hero of the hero's journey is the one who is able to submit to the change and be resurre resurrected anew. Now, in order to complete the hero's journey, there are two major steps, two complete sections uh, of this journey. The first section is to detach from the ordinary world, the world that you and I live in on a day-to-day -day basis, and to withdraw from that world and go into the internal world. In myth, this is the special world. Uh, this is when Gilgamesh goes below. In psychology, it is the unconscious, going into the unconscious, which can be done through dreams, etc. Now, the second step is to be transformed to figuratively die and be reborn a stronger, more mature human being, and then to return to the ordinary world, the outer world, the day-to-day -day world, and in so doing, bring the elixir or the magic potion of one's lessons to those in one's tribe. And so you then distribute what you have brought back from the special world to those who uh, now see as a member of their society, as a contributing member. Now, where there's two major steps, there's 12 separate stages to the journey. And now, not all of these have to be met uh, for somebody to be on a hero's journey, but most of them do. So we begin with uh, the ordinary world, which is our day-to-day -day world. So you're living in the ordinary world. Then the call to adventure comes. The summons to undertake a perilous journey uh, will arrive, and sometimes this call arrives via the hero's mentor. Normally there's a mentor. Now, many times the hero refuses the call. He or she does not want to risk life and limb on this dangerous journey. So if that happens, normally it results in the hero's life being upended and all sorts of horrible circumstances occur. Now the hero will then meet the mentor, uh, who if the hero has not been convinced by circumstances of how horrible that person's life has become, the mentor will convince the hero to accept the call to adventure.
so they're going on the on the adventure one now after the hero has accepted the call she must cross the first threshold this is the thresh threshold that lays between the ordinary world the day-to-day -day world and the special world where she will face her first test and meet allies and enemies so here you can think of dorothy landing in oz and killing the wicked witch of the east with her house meeting uh, the good witch, meeting the scarecrow, who are allies, and meeting the wicked witch of the West, who is her enemy. Now, once in the special world, meeting the allies and the enemies, uh, there's a second threshold to cross into the inmost cave. Now, this is a special world within the special world. In uh, the case of Oz, it's the castle of Oz, or it's also the castle of the wicked witch of the West, and it's here that an ordeal or a major challenge must be met. So again, going to the Wizard of Oz, the challenge is that uh, Dorothy has to get the Wicked Witch's broom. Now, once the challenge has been met, in the case of Dorothy, she gets the broom. The trials overcome. Uh, the trials have been overcome. The hero then receives an award. So this is known as the seizing of the sword. Uh, a lot of times, it can be known as the magic elixir, the magic potion. So once the uh, the the sword or the magic elixir has gotten been gotten. She must now travel out of the special world back into the ordinary world from which she came. But before she can return, she must die and be resurrected. So again, this is a literal, uh, not a literal death, it's a figure of death. So her ego must burn and a new, more mature, less self-centered person must rise from the ashes. A person who can now contribute to the tribe. And now she can pass back. As she, having been transformed, she can pass back into the ordinary world with the magic elixir, the magic potion, for the rest of the people and share it among them. So throughout this course, we will see people on hero's journeys. Uh, Gilgamesh, the first thing you read, goes on a hero's journey. Achilles in the Iliad goes on a hero's journey. Odysseus in the, De in the Odyssey is on a hero's journey. Rama from the Ramayana in India is on a hero's journey. Today, we hero's journeys. Luke Skywalker from Star Wars is on a hero's journey. Uh, Neo from The Matrix is on a hero's journey. Harry Potter is on a hero's journey. All right, so uh, we're still seeing these myths being lived out throughout movies today, and they still have lessons to give us. So like I said, the rest of the semester will go more in depth into this. We'll see how it relates to the various stories that, that we're going to be reading.